Hey guys, this is Anil from bloggerspression.com. In today's video, we are going to talk about Google algorithm updates. Google team has been making too many updates these days. They are coming with a new update every second nowadays. So your traffic on Google search can go down if you don't take your website's health seriously. You should watch this video till end if you are aiming at getting more traffic to your blog or website from Google search. For whom this video is going to be helpful? One, those guys who are being hit by any of recent Google algo updates or penalties. Second, people who are aiming at getting more traffic to their websites or blogs from search engines like Google. And third, those who want to improve the SEO for their websites and blogs. In today's video, I'm going to share you a checklist which will help you get better results on Google search if you follow the steps that are mentioned in the checklist. Before we move to the checklist, let me show you how we have been doing with Google search. Blogger's Passion blog has started in 2010. If you look at this graph, you can see we have been able to make consistent growth with our traffic year on year on bloggerspassion.com. And it's more than 10 years now, we have been running bloggerspassion.com. You must watch this video if you want to recover from any of recent Google algo updates or want to protect your website or blog from Google upcoming updates or penalties. Now let me take you to the checklist that I was talking about. So this is the quick checklist you can use to get better results with your efforts on Google search. I am going to share the link for this checklist in the description of this video so you can download that checklist and use it. Now I will try to explain the action elements from this checklist for you. First of all you need to make sure the number of pages indexed in Google should match with the actual content on your blog. Suppose your blog has 100 pages. In that case Google should also have the similar kind of numbers for your blog or website in Google search as well. This is really important. You need to make sure that Google does not have any extra pages in its index for your website. If that happens, the overall rankings for your website can go down. Now you can find the number of pages that are indexed in Google search. So let me tell you how you can find it. There are a couple of ways you can do it. One, you can use the site colon command on Google and then type in your domain name. So if you look at site colon bloggerspression.com, there are 520 pages indexed in Google search. You can do the same for your domain as well. You have to type in site colon then the domain name in Google search. Second method that you can use is use the data that is available in your Google search console account. Let me just show you quick. If you go to your Google search console dashboard from here, you can see the number of pages indexed. So for bloggers person, it shows for 82 pages indexed. So the motive behind first checklist is to make sure Google should have just the exact number of pages that you have in your domain in its index. They should not be more than the actual pages. Now let's talk about this next action element. If you are targeting the same set of keywords on multiple pages, your website rankings can go down. So what you should do? You should put all the information that you have put on all of those pages into one page and redirect the extra pages into the one page which you want to get indexed in Google search. Websites and blogs that have been running for a long time for many years, they could face these kind of faces because they happen to write contents on the same set of keywords over time. When you try to target the same set of keywords on multiple pages that used to be the case of keyword cannibalization. Next, you need to make sure your website speed should be really fast. Most of your important pages should load within a couple of seconds. There are lots of tools you can use to test the speed for your website home page as well as important product or service pages. You can use GT metrics, you can use ping DOM, you can use Google speed testing tool. So you can use any tool and make sure all the important pages are loading within a couple of seconds only. Next, you need to make sure all of your website pages should be mobile friendly. 
you can keep a check on mobile usability issues for your website using your Google Search Console account. So let me show you the mobile usability report for my blog, blogspacing.com. So you can see there are 391 valid pages, so there are no errors. It means all the pages of my blog are mobile friendly. So you also need to make sure all the pages that you have on your website or blog, they are mobile friendly. Next, you need to make sure all the links that are available on your website or blog, they should be working. There should be no broken link at all. There are lots of online tools available from where you can find the broken links for your website. And if your blog is on WordPress, there are plugins using which you can find all the broken links that are on your blog. So if you own a WordPress blog, install a broken link checker plugin and find all the broken links and then fix them. Next, you need to make sure the content quality on your blog is really good. You need to get rid of all the outdated content on your blog and then replace that with the valuable content. So it's time to take your blog's content to the next level. Add graphics, add videos, add more relevant information in your blog contents. Next is about AMP which is Accelerate Mobile Pages. If you are serving AMP version on your blog, you need to make sure all the AMP pages on your blog, they should be working fine and they should be valid AMP pages. How you know if the AMP version that you have set up on your website or blog is valid or not. So there is a Chrome extension that you can use to know whether a particular page is valid or not. Let me just show you an example that will take you to my blog hostingnongs.com and just let me open a blog post. So I have already installed this add-on and from here I have to click on its shortcut. If it shows green mark against a page, it means that page is valid M page and if it shows red mark then there are some errors or warnings on that M page which you need to fix. Next it's about keyword stuffing. If you are adding your keyword too many times in your blog contents, you are doing keyword stuffing. If you are doing it, you should stop doing it instantly. Keyword stuffing is not recommended at all if you are aiming at getting better results from Google search. So what's the solution for keyword stuffing? If you have already added your main keyword too many times in your content, I would suggest you to remove its occurrence and then replace few of its occurrence with other LSI keywords, related keywords and channel keywords. That way you will be able to get better rankings on Google search and will also be able to target more keywords. And in case you want to know about what are LSA keywords and how we can find them, I would suggest you to check this tutorial on my blog. Next, don't show too many ads or pop-ups on your website or blogs. If you are showing too many ads or pop-ups on your blog or website, you are killing the experience of your users as well as you are harming your rankings on Google search. If you are aiming at getting better results on Google search, stay away from pop-ups and show very few ads on your website pages. Google has an algorithm which was Google page layout algorithm which they rolled out long time back. That algo was hitting the websites and blogs that were showing too many ads to their users. Next, you need to make sure your website should be secure. It should not have any suspicious code or any malicious code. Next, you should do your website SEO audit from time to time. There are tools that can help you do the SEO audit for you. And if you ask me how I do SEO audit, I use sembus.com for doing all kind of SEO audits for my blogs and websites. If you want to use Sembus for doing site audit, you can use the link that I'm going to share in the description as well as into this spreadsheet which will help you use Sembus free for the next 30 days. Next section is about backlinks. You need to keep a check on your backlink profile. You should find the backlinks for your website using your Google Search Console and study them from time to time. Let me show you from where you can find them. When you go to your Google Search Console account, there is a section called links. You need to click that and then you can go to top linking sites and then click on more. 
Google Search Console used to report the top thousand websites that are linking to you. So what you should do with this report, you should study all those websites and make a list of bad websites or blogs that are linking to you. Once you have made the list of all the bad backlinks that are pointing to a website, you can use Google Disavow tool to report all those bad backlinks to Google. Next, you should focus on building high quality backlinks only for your websites and blogs. Don't aim at getting too many links to your website. Just focus on getting links from really high authority and relevant websites. And in case you want to know how we build backlinks for our blogs, you can just check this blog post. Next, it's about do follow and no follow backlinks. You should not run after just do follow backlinks. Your backlink profile should be a mix of do follow and no follow backlinks. If most of the backlinks that are pointing to your website, if they are do follow, Google is going to take that thing negatively. So you should make sure the links that are coming to your website or blog, they should be mix of both do follow and no follow. If you want to know more in detail about do follow and no follow backlinks, you can check this tutorial on my blog. Next, you should not build too many backlinks using the same anchor text. You should put lots of variety in your anchor text while building backlinks for web pages. And the last point you should keep in mind is not going for side-wide links. Don't build side-wide links for your website. If you are going for side-wide links, you will end up getting thousands of backlinks from a single domain. You should aim at getting links from different domains and not too many backlinks from a single domain. Google gives more weightage to the links that are coming from different domain. So focus more on domain diversity. Guys, with this, I came to the end of this checklist which I created keeping in mind the kind of updates Google is making these days. By following the action elements that are shared here, I hope you will be able to get better results for websites and blogs in Google search. Guys, if you are liking this video, don't forget to like this video, share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be coming with more educational videos around blogging, SEO and affiliate marketing related topics in the coming days. So keep watching videos on my YouTube channel and we will see you in the next video. And thanks a lot for watching today's video.